we got a young lady, a uh, recent, recent case, a young lady fall from a horse. Uh, I think the horse may have rolled back onto her. So quite a high mechanism of injury, um, quite a high height. You know. He comes into theatre and has this axial CT scan and it's not in a binder. Unusually, not in a binder on the CT scan, in the scoop uh, or, or, or on the CT gantry, which is curved. And looking through this scan, I'm looking and I'm thinking, there's a normal SI joint, even though it's on the side of the fracture, and the other side looks pretty normal. Here's the ALAR fracture here, and there's some comminution of it. And for me, a bit of comminution tends to indicate that there may be a bit of mischief. And this fracture seems to come out the back here. Here's another slice, it through the body of S2, do, 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 out the back. We've got bilateral anterior ramus, a little parasympathetic thing going on. Uh, I tell a lie. It wasn't a lady fall from the horse. It was a young man involved in a motorcycle, a, mo a motor vehicle accident. Uh, and the reason why I'm correcting you is because of the next image. Or the image after that. So we've got an inlet view, nice hard cortical density. There's a degree of deformity around this pelvis. And I'm thinking it's looking a little bit squished up. And it's indicating to me that it is, uh, it's unstable. Um, and he's a polytrauma patient. But boy, when you put some mechanism, when you put some force on him, he really crumples up. Sure, the image is slightly off the fluoro machine, and I don't believe it's that much more rotated, but he really does crumple. And I think the point he's hinging at is at the front, the anterior, root of ramus. So compression at the back gets overlap, and he hinges at the front, giving this buckle type appearance. So, what's my operative strategy going to be? If I know. That if I put SI screws, and not everyone uses SI screws, some people use tension band plates, some people use sickle bars or, or posterior infixes, there's a whole gamut of ways to fix post the posterior arch. But if I just put SI screws, I can compress this guy's pelvis to look like this. You know, a great degree of deformity, a great deal of power goes into SI screws, but, but, but that's not good. Really, what we need is compression at the back, compression at the back, but a strut to retain the anterior position. And that strut could be an infix, an internal fixator, an external fixator, or other. A smiley plate on the inside, or um, more percutaneous techniques. Um, what I've done here is use bilateral anti-grade column screws um, from the cluteus medius tuberosity down to the pubic tubercles through the rami, uh, basically an internal nail. Um, of the rami before compression at the back through the SI screws. And this is our departmental inlet view um, at follow up about two months after injury. And he's got a good preservation of uh, his sacral morphology, I would say. And this is an outlet view. Um, you can see we're safe in our corridors. There's a frame of S1, frame of S2, and S2. Um, and went nice on this root of ramus uh, column screws um, away from the hip joint. We can also see this good restoration of rotational alignment. So the spinous processes in the symphysis all line up. So the goal of my EUA um, it is to show the obvious. Okay, so it's a dress rehearsal for me to know where my angles are for the inlet and outlet views. It's a dress rehearsal for the radiographer to support me in that process. Um, it's to assess the stability, so compression, or again, occasionally you want to see whether it's pushing the pelvis backwards or superiorly, if it's a vertical shear, and by how much. It's a go at your reduction maneuvers to see, you know, how does this pelvis become better? What's my strategy here? But it's also to find the unexpected injury, right? It's to find that unexpected LC3 fracture. I shall go on. This here looks pretty standard. 
sacred AR fracture. This is the fall from the horse, by the way. This is the fall from the horse. Comminution at the front. SI joints look pretty symmetrical. But this patient was in a lot of pain. High energy mechanism of injury, a lot of pain, couldn't cough, couldn't roll in bed. Um, CT was done outside of a binder, so there wasn't any real deformity to see on that. Um, and, and unfortunately, despite a trial of mobilization with physios, this all failed and kind of wondered what was going on. Is there more that meets the eye? Am I missing a really unstable pelvis? Patient was hemodynamically stable throughout. So this is in, um, our, in fluoro. And again, nice, nice inlet view. I got taught well. Um, showing S1 on S2. You can see the little recess here of where we've got some mischief where L5 sits as it comes over um, S1. SI, so I haven't got a proper down the wing view or SI view, and here's our alar fracture, and that's our parasympathetic injury on the same side. Now this is a down the wing view. This is a special view where you come up to inlet, okay, you come up to inlet on the side, and you go down about 10 to 15 degrees, looking for that hard lateral cortical border of the iliac crest here at the PSIS at the back, and you get a nice shoot through at the sacral iliac joint. That's a great view for assessing how that sacral iliac joint behaves when you um, put forces through it, either compression, but more importantly, you want to know if it's an external rotation deformity. Otherwise, this is the AP side of an LC3 injury. It's a bit of a mouthful, we'll get there. Yeah, see if it's open and needs closing up. Got more images of that to come. This patient didn't have an LC3. It was an LC1, but it was an unstable LC1. So putting the set force through this pelvis has demonstrated that it compresses up. And she's in pain. So I'm thinking, we need to fix this. What's my strategy going to be? Well, my strategy is thus. I need to bring the, the front to a normal, um, to normal position to restitute the pelvis to where it should be before I compress the back. But if I put metal work in, often the fluoro struggles then to find the frame, or I struggle to find the frame in because the contrast has changed because there's metal in the way. So what I, when there isn't a great deal of deformity, um, what I do is I put my SI guide wires at the back, fully happy that I know exactly where they're going. And then I put my strut in the front, pull it out, over drill the back a little bit, and that gives me some wiggle room for those screws to maneuver and create compression.